Well, this is a really crucial reaction, again, both on the test and for the whole rest of the course. This is the whole reason we make grignards, to attack carbonyls. Grignards love attacking carbonyls. Why is this so interesting? Because it made a new carbon-carbon bond. This is the only way we know to make a carbon-carbon bond. Notice how much more complicated and interesting this molecule is than the starting material. Well, that's what synthesis want to do. They want to make complicated molecules from simple molecules. So this is the whole point of a Grignard reagent. Let's take a look at the handout on uh, oxidation and reduction of alcohols. The handout for oxidation and reduction of alcohols. Where is this compound on that table? Um, that's it is a ketone. This is a ketone because it's a carbonyl carbon yeah. connected to two carbon chains. Here we have a ketone. And then what did we do in that table? What, what operation did we go through here? Um, we added... We added a minus some um, negative carbon, negatively charged carbon. Yeah. So did we add H minus? No, we added R minus. We added R minus, and then where did we end up on the table? An, uh, an tertiary alcohol. alcohol. Is that really what we got? Is this a tertiary alcohol? Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's always good when you're working with Grignards to keep referring to the table as well. So we started with the ketone, and we went uh, what down into the left to the tertiary alcohol over here. But of course, even if you've never even heard the words tertiary and alcohol before, you should still be able to get the right product just by following the electron pushing arrows, um, like we did over here. Um, so again, this would be a good synthesis. Now, OK, so that gave us our products here. Remember that with Grignards, you have to add the water in a separate step. What would have happened if we added the H3O plus in step one? We would have just gotten this. Yeah. It would have been the same as down here. Obviously, the person here didn't want this to just protonate it. He wanted it to attack the carbonyl, so he had to wait until the second step before you added the H3O+. plus. If you look at the bottom of the handout, it shows you that whenever you use a Grignard, you have to add the H3O+, plus in the second step. So that's very important uh, as well. That's not in the top part of the table, because I read out of room, but that's an important idea. OK, questions? It's hard to overemphasize how important this reaction is. You really got to make a flashcard of this and, and really uh, memorize that. OK. Um, so uh, is there, I mean, like, mm -hmm. past this, is there more new stuff at all that we have to learn? To the midterm? So why don't we do that? I mean, he's still going through the different parts of synthesis. There's like a big chart of synthesis that he's going through. He's uh, going through oh, I thought we were just doing examples. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there's really a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, so somehow it seems like we did get a little bit behind uh, somehow. Uh, and probably we won't have time to go over every single reaction that could possibly be on the test. What I'm trying to do is go over what are the, the reactions that tend to be important uh, on exams. Um, okay, so. Let's draw the mechanism and the products here. So this is another predict the products.
So you guys are doing pretty good with that. So uh, I'm just going to start by erasing the covalent bond and turning it into an ionic. Now I know this negative carbon will be at the tail. And who should be at the head? The carbonyl carbon. Why is it reasonable for carbonyl carbons to be at the head of an arrow? Because it's got the partial positive. We know a carbon with a partial positive is a good electrophile. Uh, again, numbering is probably helpful here. One, two, three, and I'll number this carbon as uh, number four. So here I'm going to start by drawing the ring. So here's the ring. Here's the number four carbon. Who's attached to the number four carbon? An oxygen. So here's an oxygen. Who else? Carbon number two. Good. And who's attached to the number two carbon? Three and one. Yeah, off to the sides. So again, step by step is the safest way to draw all these uh, guys in over here. All right, and then the most important part is the charges. The number two was at the initial tail. It lost electrons, so it ends up neutral. And the oxygen is at the final head. It gains electrons, so it ends up negative. I think you guys are pretty much getting this. This is good. Um, and then step two is the protonation. Now the oxygen is interesting because it has the charge. And it picks up a proton. I'm not going to keep numbering anymore because things are getting simple now. Um, so this should be the product. So you want to make sure that you got something uh, that looks like uh, that. I didn't bother showing the magnesium bromide anymore, but I could, have shown, I could have shown the magnesium bromide over here. And then in step two, we don't care about the magnesium bromide anymore. Uh, what type of functional group is this? Oxygen? I mean, Al alcohol. alcohol. It's an alcohol. Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Tertiary. Tertiary. The end of our I think we kind of did the same thing again. We started with the ketone. And we added the Grignard to make a tertiary alcohol. So we went down the same path in our, um, in our table again. If, if we didn't have a tertiary, would we just keep going? Uh, you could. That's right. So if we had just made a secondary alcohol, then we could oxidize that and hit it with another Grignard. In fact, uh, if you start all the way at the top, you can oxidize and Grignard uh, once, twice, three times, maybe four times. Once, two, three times. All right. Okay, and again, this is a really crucial reaction not to lose sight of, so make sure this doesn't fall into a, a black hole in your notes. Uh, this is an important reaction for the rest uh, of the course. Now, um, how would this be a synthesis problem? How would they present this if this was a synthesis problem? It would give you the answer of the product and just make an arrow, a weird looking arrow that we don't like, towards. Now, no, actually, they wouldn't do that. They would, they would actually give you a normal arrow. They would simply have the starting materials and a normal arrow and this product. Didn't you say they would many times show it to us the way we don't like it? That's when people are using retrosynthesis. And remember, retrosynthesis is not a type of problem. It's just a thought technique that people use. So if this was a synthesis problem, oh, let's show how this would look as a synthesis. It would look like this. It would just look like this. They would just give you the starting materials, and they would give you this product. Did I draw that correctly, the product, right? Yeah. yeah so they give you the starting great. material and this product. They just draw a normal yield arrow, a normal reaction arrow. Uh, and then your job would be that to figure out. That's hard. What's that? <laughs> that one would be hard. Yeah, well, uh, I agree that it would be hard, but it would not be, uh, it would be a very ordinary you exam type carbon, question. So you know there has to be a, a, some type of granule. And you well, know, it has to be a green year. <laughs> you don't put the two on. The well, I'm thing. saying how much you know to make how okay. you know to make it look. Oh. Well, I guess you how know it has to be a ring with a double bonded oxygen. Yeah, maybe we should show how we do this as a as a synthesis problem here. Okay, so let's say we had this uh, synthesis. Uh, maybe I'm gonna be uh, running out of room here, so I'll erase some of this up well, here. Since they clearly added a ring, you know, you have yeah, to add uh, something with a yeah. ring. So it's a well, ring maybe I was thinking more of the top one, like how do you know, how, how would you know how many carbons? Well, I guess you count how many carbons you need to add, uh, but yeah. Should we do the top one? We, like, we should do one synthesis with this. I could do the top one or the bottom one, whichever Why don't we do an extra one? Uh, actually, we'll learn more if we, uh, well, okay, I guess we'll do an extra one. All right, so, fair enough. So, let's see here. Uh, Let's do this one at, 